Hello, hello, more dimmers here and welcome back to Chessable Masters 2020. I would like to show you one more game from Group A uh, because this game was pretty, pretty unique. It's wonderful, memorable game. Daniel Dubov as white plays against current world champion Magnus Carlsen again. So we've seen a couple of games between these two, but as I said, this is very, very unique game. So without further ado, let's jump onto the board. Uh, we have d4 by Daniel Dubov, knight on f6, knight on f3, d5, c4, c6. Slav defense. And we've seen Slav defense couple of times during this tournament, so seems like, uh, you know, some of the players uh, just want to practice it more. Uh, we have knight on c3, e6, so Magnus Carlsen goes for this uh, very solid approach. He doesn't take on c4, which can be very sharp. Uh, we have g3 by Daniel Dubov, so he want to, you know, fianchetto to the, the bishop and plays with this uh, Catalan bishop. Let's call it Catalan bishop. We have knight b on d7 and now bishop on g2, bishop on e7 uh, and now we have castle, castle, b3 and b6. Uh, and for me it's very interesting because uh, against the stronger opponents I very often go for this setup. Okay, this setup with the bishop on a6, this is what Magnus played. So I was pretty interested what can happen in this in this game. Uh, normally bishop on b2 is played here, but we have rook on e1. So preparing um, the break breakout on the in the center. So e4 is definitely uh, on the radar of, of Daniel Dubov, but first we have bishop on a6, so there is no time to play e4, because now c4 is attacked twice and white have to react somehow. c takes on d5, this is possible, but Daniel Dubov goes for some other move, knight on d2, okay, defending c4. We have rook on c8, moving the rook to the center, you know, uh, moving it also from this diagonal, so in case if uh, black want to take on c4 there will be you know no problems on this diagonal we have bishop on b2 c5 and now uh, everything has to be solved somehow of course e3 is possible but you know playing rook e1 just to play e3 uh, wouldn't make much sense so uh, there are a lot of styles some people want to play with the with the isolated queen spawn some people want to play against isolated queen spawn all of the options are possible. Uh, of course, some symmetrical variations uh, also are possible. Uh, and here Daniel Dubov choose to play d takes on c5. We have knight takes on c5. This knight has a very natural outpost on c5. However, white doesn't like it, definitely. And I can understand why. Uh, this is why we have b4. b4 with the idea of locking also um, the bishop uh, on a6, which can be, you know, uh, pretty pretty annoying here. We have knight c on e4, knight on c on e4, d takes on e4 and now as you see there is a lot of pressure on these pawns uh, so something has to be done. We have b5 as planned and now bishop on b7 and e3. So because of the, of the pawn on e4 there is no e4 anymore so e3 was forced to play uh, and now we have bishop on b4 by Magnus Carlsen. So so this knight is pinned for the moment. Uh, we have rook on e2, uh, unpinning, and now queen on d3. So clearly preparing some moves like rook c on d8 and trying to win the, uh, the knight. And it looks like it's pretty dangerous. Uh, what to play now? Daniel Dubov decided for rook on b1. Uh, and now this rook x-raying the, the bishop, so if this bishop takes, for example, on f6, that's quite a threat, you know, losing the piece is uh, quite a threat. So uh, we have bishop on c3 and it seems like this uh, gonna be very, very bloody. Uh, and it's a lot of ideas here and it's difficult to, you know, uh, focus on all of them. However, um, the easiest what Daniel Dubov could play here is just bishop on c3. Exchange these bishops and after queen on c3, uh, let's say rook on c1, because this pawn is is definitely a weakness. So uh, queen on d3, now for example bishop on f1 and uh, 
this queen probably would just retreat queen on d6 and the game could continue. So this is very, very natural approach. However, uh, Daniel Dubov goes for something really, really wild. And uh, people in studio, grandmasters in studio, Yasser Sirawan, I think he asked uh, Magnus Carlsen during the interview why Daniel goes for, for something, you know, uh, some so sharp lines here. Uh, he played bishop on a3 attacking the rook and Magnus answered I have no idea I uh, you should ask Daniel why why he did that but this was you know uh, pretty surprising for me uh, but <clears throat> as Daniel also said in one of the interviews that uh, everybody wants to play Magnus and improve the skills so probably he wanted just to prove uh, that he can play you know sharp chess as well uh, no idea what was the reason but simply we have rook f on d8 so avoiding the, the losing the exchange uh, and now as you see the knight is attacked three times and it's also um, and it's also pinned. It cannot be moved because the queen is hanging over there. So we have rook on b3, even sharper approach now, uh, pinning the bishop. Uh, but there is the problem. I think this was the last moment where Daniel could try bishop on b4. However, this is probably too late. Bishop on b4 is um, is losing the pawn, of course, rook on c4. So this pawn definitely was, was weak. Uh, but at, at least after bishop on c3, rook on c3, let's say rook on b2 can try to unpin the knight. Uh, this knight can say, let's say, knight on g4, uh, queen on f1, unpin the, the knight, and now after the knight on e5, uh, knight b1, the game could continue, okay? Let's say the, the rook uh, retreat. This knight gonna go to d3, gonna be uh, pretty powerful there. But at least, you know, uh, white would not lose the exchange or, or lose the piece. But it's, you know, the price is one pawn and probably dominating position by black. However, as I said, we have rook on b3. Uh, it's pretty complicated now what is going on. Magnus takes the pawn. Okay, this is a free pawn, so um, the same. And now what to play now? If white uh, exchange the, the queens this way, so uh, knight on c4, rook on d1, uh, bishop on f1, have to, that is just a um, forced move. Uh, then rook on c4. Uh, rook on c2 and now it looks like white can get back the the material here win the win the bishop however knight on d5 defending the bishop uh, and there is the move bishop on b2 but also it can be stopped with the rook on b1 look at this position what is going on you see already what is going on because it can be very difficult to catch up. Uh, and now, for example, bishop on c3. Okay, so uh, we have three attackers. Okay, so bishop on c3, rook on b3. So removing one of the attackers. This is the problem. You don't have more attackers. A takes on b3, rook c3, uh, and let's say just after after moving the pieces. Uh, you can move bishop d5 and you are totally fine. The bishop controls a8, so there is no problem. So black gonna have one extra piece. So of course this is winning. Uh, and after rook on b1, if you would like to first take with the rook, so uh, rook b on c3, it doesn't work because knight on c3, bishop on c3, uh, and simply rook on c8 so it's you know exchange up it's much better of course but but it's still exchange up you can try something like i don't know rook on d1 rook on d2 uh forcing but it's still uh it's it's just you know exchange up so black definitely is winning here uh what else could be played here uh, maybe bishop on b2 bishop on b2 attacking this bishop this way uh but simply just retreat with the bishop and everything is fine. Uh, the knight is still under attack. So simply the, the rook's gonna come and pick up the, the knight and win the knight. So this is the problem. The queen cannot be unpinned, okay? The queen cannot be unpinned, cannot go to, to c1 because queen gonna take it. Uh, if goes to, to e1, it's still a pin. 
So uh, here is the problem. Uh, we have queen on e1 anyway by Daniel Dubov. He doesn't really have a choice. He doesn't have a good move here. Uh, we have queen on d5 by Magnus Carlsen now. So uh, he is attacking the knight three times already. We have bishop on b4. So in the case of taking the, the knight, the bishop gonna take on, on d2. So everything looks pretty good. And this is the critical moment of the game. So feel free to pause the video and find the winning move for black while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So it's quite a move, okay? If you try, for example, take the bishop uh, on b4, it, it's still okay, move, okay? However, it's not winning. Rook on b4, and if you have rook on c2 uh, in mind, it just doesn't work uh, because not only this knight is not pinned anymore, so it can be moved, for example, to b3, uh, but also you have rook on d4, and now black are in losing position, okay? Uh, this rook gonna take on d8 or take the queen and, and win the game. So definitely that's not the move. But queen on b3, sacrificing the queen, this is quite the move. Uh, what to play now? Knight on b3, trying to, you know, exchange the queens only. Just, just I will show you what, what will happen. So knight on b3, bishop on e1. And after rook on e1, black just gonna dominate the, the field. So for example, rooks can go to the, to the second rank, can for example exchange the, the knight, bring another rook, dominate the, the second rank. Also, this knight can jump to d3. That would be beautiful outpost as well, helping to, to attack f2. So black would just dominate. That would be pretty easy game for black to continue. Uh, however, Daniel Dubovs is not interested in losing in such a fashion, so he take the queen. Uh, and now he, we have the problem. Bishop on b4 and what to play as white? What to play as white? So for example, if whites do nothing, so playing something like queen on d1, because this knight has to be, you know, guarded, otherwise it's gonna be lost. And the problem is it's pinned. Uh, and it was pinned here and it's gonna be pinned here. And how to defend the knight? You cannot go to, to c1 because it's also uh, controlled by the, by the black rook. So if you play something like queen on d1, black can very slowly play rook on d7, queen on e1, rook c on d8, and winning the piece anyway. Uh, if you try f3, let's say you want to move the, the queen to f2, control the, the d2 square, and now the, the knight can be unpinned. The problem is uh, e takes on f3, and you're gonna lose this bishop, okay? You lose the bishop, uh, and you didn't solve even the problem. You are still in the same problem. So this is also not the greatest idea. Uh, what engine recommends is queen on a1. So giving up the material because there is no way to save the save the knight. Uh, but after bishop on d2, let's see what we have. We have um, the rook and the bishop, the rook and the bishop, and knight, bishop, and the rook for the queen. So definitely black is just dominating here. Uh, nothing can be done. Uh, Daniel tries bishop on f1, but it doesn't help much um, about anything. And here Magnus Carlsen has a lot of time and he can play any move. Uh, he play a5. a5 and waiting for Daniel. What you're gonna do? You cannot take it. You cannot take it because uh, bishop on a6 and now even your, your rook is under attack. So uh, let's say queen on d1 and uh, the, the situation is the same. Uh, just, okay, you unpinned, but, uh, but it doesn't matter because you're gonna lose even more material. And as you see now, it's, it's just dominating. One extra uh, piece and uh, this is just dominating. So uh, instead we have queen on d1, but we already knows how it's gonna end. So Magnus Carlsen, believe me or not, but he played h6. h6 and still waiting for Daniel. What you gonna do? And Daniel doesn't have any moves. He cannot do anything here. I show you already that all of the pieces are, are just stuck over there. The rook cannot move because defending of the knight. The knight cannot move because it's pinned. Uh, 
this bishop can move go and back however as i said the rooks are coming and and winning this this night anyway so in this position daniel dubov resigned the game what a game beautiful Zugzwang at the end and beautiful queen sacrifice so congratulations to magnus carlsen for creating such a masterpiece uh, and one more time i would like to show you group a standing so here we go magnus carlsen vladislav artemiev hikaru nakamura and alexander grishuk uh, are qualified to the quarterfinals uh, sadly, Daniel Dubov, who had a really nice tournament, but in the last round uh, he lost to Hikaru Nakamura. He is knocked out. Also, Pentala Hare Krishna um, has to say goodbye to the tournament. So that's the standings. And uh, and yeah, if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss any other quality content, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.